Fleetwood Mac are a British-American rock band, formed in London in 1967. The band has sold more than 100 million records worldwide, making them one of the best-selling bands of all time. In 1998, selected members of Fleetwood Mac were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and received the Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to Music. The two most successful periods for the band were during the late 1960s British blues boom, when they were led by guitarist Peter Green and achieved a UK number one with Albatross, and from 1975 to 1987, as a more pop-oriented act, featuring Christine McVie, Lindsay Buckingham, and Stevie Nicks. Rumors, 1977, Fleetwood Mac's second album after the incorporation of Buckingham and Nicks, produced four US top 10 singles and remained at number one on the American Albums chart for 31 weeks, as well as reaching the top spot in various countries around the world. To date, the album has sold over 40 million copies worldwide, making it the eighth highest selling album of all time. The band achieved more modest success between 1971 and 1974, when the lineup included Bob Welch, during the 1990s in between the departure and return of Nix and Buckingham, and during the 2000s when Christine McVie was absent. Due to numerous lineup changes, the only original member present in the band is drummer Mick Fleetwood. Although band founder Green named the group by combining the surnames of two of his former band mates, Fleetwood and McVie, from John Mayall's Blues Breakers, bassist John McVie played neither on their first single nor at their first concerts, as he initially decided to stay with Mayall. Keyboardist Christine McVie, who joined the band in 1970 while married to John McVie, has appeared on every album except the debut album, either as a member or as a session musician. She left the band in 1998 but returned in 2014. History Formation and Early Years, 1967-71 Fleetwood Mac were formed in July 1967 in London when Peter Green left the British blues band John Mayall and the Blues Breakers. Peter Green had replaced guitarist Eric Clapton in the Blues Breakers, and received critical acclaim for his work on their album A Hard Road. After he had been in the Blues Breakers for some time, Green asked if drummer Mick Fleetwood could replace Ainsley Dunbar. Green had been in two bands with Fleetwood Peter B's Lunars and the subsequent Shotgun Express, which featured a young Rod Stewart as vocalist. John May all agreed and Fleetwood became a member of the band. The Blues Breakers now consisted of Green, Fleetwood, John McVie, and May all. May all gave Green free recording time as a gift, in which Fleetwood, McVie, and Green recorded five songs. The fifth song was an instrumental which Green named after the rhythm section, Fleetwood Mac. Soon after, Green contacted Fleetwood to form a new band. The pair wanted McVie on bass guitar and even named the band Fleetwood Mac as a way to entice him. However, McVie opted to keep his steady income with Mayall rather than take a risk with a new band. In the meantime Peter Green and Mick Fleetwood teamed up with slide guitarist Jeremy Spencer and bassist Bob Brunning, who was in the band on the understanding that he would leave if McVie agreed to join. The Green, Fleetwood, Spencer, Brunning version of the band made its debut on August 13, 1967 at the Windsor Jazz and Blues Festival as Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac featuring Jeremy Spencer. Brunning merely played at a handful of gigs with Fleetwood Mac. Within weeks of this show, John McVie agreed to join the band as permanent bassist. Fleetwood Mac's first album, Fleetwood Mac, was a no-frills blues album and was released on the Blue Horizon label in February 1968. In fact there were no other players on the album, except for the song Long Grey Mare, which was recorded with Brunning on bass. The album was successful in the UK, hitting number 4, though it did not have any singles on it. The band soon released two singles Black Magic Woman, later a big hit for Santana, and Need Your Love So Bad. The band's second album, M.R. Wonderful, was released in August 1968. Like the first it was an all-blues album, but this time they made a few changes. The album was recorded live in the studio with mic'd amplifiers and PAW system, rather than plugged into the board. This method provided the ideal environment for producing this style of music, and gave it an authentically vintage sound. 
They also added horns and featured a friend of the band on keyboards, Christine Perfect of Chicken Shack prior to her marriage to John McVie. Shortly after the release of their second album Fleetwood Mac added guitarist Danny Kerwin, then just 18 years old, to their lineup, recruited from the South London blues trio Boiler House, consisting of Kerwin on guitar with Trevor Stevens on bass and Dave Terry on drums. Green and Fleetwood had been to watch Boiler House rehearse in a basement boiler room and Green was so impressed, he invited the band to play support slots for Fleetwood Mac. Green wanted Boiler House to become a professional band but Stevens and Terry were not prepared to turn professional at the time, so Green sought to find another rhythm section by placing an ad in Melody Maker. There were over 300 applicants, but when Green and Fleetwood ran auditions at the Nags Head in Battersea, home of the Mike Vernon Blue Horizon Club, the hard-to-please Green could not find anyone good enough to replace the pair, so he invited Kerwin to join Fleetwood Mac as their third guitarist. Green had been frustrated that Jeremy Spencer had little desire to contribute to Green's songs. A self-taught guitarist, Kerwin's signature vibrato and unique style added a new dimension to an already complete band. With Kerwin the band released their first number one single in Europe, Albatross. Around this time they released their second American album, English Rose, which contained half of MR Wonderful, new songs from Kerwin, and their third European album called The Pious Bird of Good Omen, which was a collection of singles, b-sides, and a selection of some work the band did with Eddie Boyd. When the band went to the United States in January 1969 they recorded many songs at the soon-to-close Chess Records studio, with some blues legends of Chicago including Willie Dixon, Buddy Guy, and Otis Spann. These would prove, however, to be Fleetwood Mac's last all-blues recordings. Along with their change of style the band was also going through some label changes. Up until this point they had been on Blue Horizon. With Kerwin in the band, however, the musical possibilities were too great for them to stay on a blues-only label. The band signed with the Immediate Records label and released Man of the World, another British and European hit single. For the B-side Spencer fronted Fleetwood Mac as Earl Vince and the Valiants and recorded Somebody's Gonna Get Their Head Kicked In Tonight, typifying the more raucous rock and roll side of the band. Immediate Records was in bad shape and the band shopped around for a new deal. Even though the Beatles wanted the band on Apple Records, Mick Fleetwood and George Harrison were brothers-in-law, the band's manager Clifford Davis decided to go with Warner Brothers Records, through Reprise Records a Frank Sinatra-founded label, the label they have stayed with ever since. Fleetwood Mac's first album for Reprise, released in September 1969, was the well-regarded then Play On. Although the initial pressing of the American release of this album was the same as the British version, it was altered to contain the song Oh Well, featured consistently in live performances from the time of its release through 1997 and then again starting in 2009. Then Play On, which was the band's first rock album, featured only the songs of Kerwin and Green. Jeremy Spencer, meanwhile, recorded a solo album, he was backed by the rest of the band, which consisted of many 1950s-style rock and roll songs. In July 1969, Fleetwood Mac opened for 10 years after at the Schaefer Music Festival at New York City's Woolman Rink. They reappeared at the festival in 1970. Fleetwood Mac were an extremely popular band in Europe at the time. However, Peter Green, the frontman of the band, was not in good health. He had taken LSD in Munich, which may have contributed to the onset of his schizophrenia. German author and filmmaker Rainer Langhans mentions in his autobiography that he and Uski Obermeier met Peter Green in Munich, where they invited him to their high fish commune. They were not really interested in Green, they just wanted to get in contact with Mick Taylor, Langhans and Obermeyer wished to organize a Bavarian Woodstock. They wanted Jimi Hendrix and the Rolling Stones to be the leading acts of their Bavarian open-air festival. They needed Green just to get in contact with the Rolling Stones via Mick Taylor. Green's last hit with Fleetwood Mac was The Green Manolishi, with the two-prong crown, first recorded at the Boston Tea Party in February 1970 and later recorded by Judas Priest. This recording was released as Green's mental stability deteriorated, and he wanted to give all of the band's money to charity. 
Other members of the band did not agree, and subsequently Green decided to leave the band. His last show with Fleetwood Mac was on May 20, 1970. During that show, the band went past their allotted time and the power was shut off, although Mick Fleetwood kept drumming. Some of the Boston Tea Party recordings, 567 February 1970, were eventually released in the 1980s as the Live in Boston album, with a more complete remastered three-volume compilation released by Snapper Music in the late 1990s. Transitional Era, 1970-74 Kerwin and Spencer were left with the task of having to fill up Peter's space in their live shows and on their recordings. In September 1970, Fleetwood Mac released Kill House Kerwin's songs moved the band in the direction of rock. Meanwhile, Spencer's contributions focused on recreating the country-tinged sun sound of the late 1950s. Christine Perfect, who had retired from the music business after one unsuccessful solo album, contributed to Kill House singing backup vocals, and drawing the album cover. Since Fleetwood Mac were progressing and developing a new sound, Perfect was asked to join the band. They also released a single at that time, Dragonfly BW The Purple Dancer in the UK and certain European countries. Despite good notices in the press, the single was not a success and the B-side has been reissued only once, on a reprise German and Dutch only best of album making it one of their most obscure songs. Christine Perfect, who was married to bassist John McVie, made her first appearance with the band as Christine McVie at Bristol University in May 1969 just as she was leaving Chicken Shack. She had success with the Etta James classic, I'd Rather Go Blind, and was twice voted Female Artist of the Year in England. Christine McVie played her first gig as an official member on August 6, 1970 in New Orleans. CBS Records, which now owned Blue Horizon, except in the US and Canada, released an album of previously unreleased material from the original Fleetwood Mac called The Original Fleetwood Mac. The album was relatively successful, and the band continued to gain popularity. While on tour in February 1971, Jeremy Spencer said he was going out to get a magazine, but never returned. After several days of frantic searching, the band discovered that Spencer had joined a religious group, the Children of God. Liable for the remaining shows on the tour, they convinced Peter Green to help finish the tour. He brought along his friend, Nigel Watson, who played the congas. Twenty-five years later Green and Watson collaborated again to form the Peter Green Splinter Group. Green, however, would only be back with Fleetwood Mac temporarily, so the band decided to search for a new guitarist. In the summer of 1971, the band held auditions for a guitarist in their large country home, Benny Fold, which they bought prior to the Kill House tour. A friend of the band named Judy Wong recommended her high school friend, Bob Welch, who was living in Paris at the time. The band had a few meetings with Welch and decided to hire him, without actually playing with him or listening to any of his recordings. In September 1971, the band released Future Games. Due to Welch's arrival and Spencer's departure, the album was different from anything the band had done up to that point, and there were many new fans in America who were becoming more and more interested in the band. In Europe, CBS released Fleetwood Mac's first greatest hits package, which was predominantly composed of songs by Peter Green, though there was one song by Spencer and one by Kerwin. In 1972, Six months after the release of Future Games, the band released the well-received album Bear Trees. Though mostly composed by Kerwin, Bear Trees featured Welch's Sentimental Lady, which would be a much bigger hit for him five years later when he re-recorded it for his solo album French Kiss, backed with Mick Fleetwood and Christine McVie. It also featured Spare Me a Little of Your Love, a bright Christine McVie tune that became a staple of the band's live act throughout the early to mid-1970s. While the band was doing well in the studio, their tours were more problematic. Danny Kerwin developed an alcohol dependency and became alienated from Welch and the McVees. It was not until he smashed his Les Paul custom guitar before a concert, refused to go on stage, and criticized the band afterwards that Fleetwood was finally convinced that he had no choice but to fire Kerwin. 
the next two and a half years proved to be the most challenging for the band. In the three albums they released in this period, they constantly changed line UPS. In September 1972, the band added guitarist Bob Weston and vocalist Dave Walker, formerly of Savoy Brown and Idol Race. Bob Weston was well known for playing slide guitar and had known the band from his touring period with Long John Baldry. Fleetwood Mac also hired Savoy Brown's road manager, John Courage. Mick, John, Christine, Welch, Weston, and Walker recorded Penguin, which was released in January 1973. After the tour, the band fired Walker because his vocal style and attitude did not fit in with the rest of the band. The remaining five carried on and recorded Mystery to Me six months later. This album contained Welch's song Hypnotized which got a lot of airplay on the radio and became one of the band's most successful songs to date in the US. The band was proud of the new album and anticipated that it would be a hit. However, things were not well within the band. The McVees' marriage at this time was under a lot of stress, which was aggravated by their constant working with each other, and John McVees' considerable alcohol abuse. During the tour, Weston had an affair with Fleetwood's wife, Jenny Boyd Fleetwood, the sister of Patty Boyd Harrison. Fleetwood soon fired Weston and the tour was cancelled. Due to lack of touring, the album sold less than its predecessor. The Fake Fleetwood Mac, 1974 in 1974, the band's manager, Clifford Davis, then claimed that he owned the name Fleetwood Mac, and recruited members of a band called Legs, which had recently issued one single under Davis' management, to tour as Fleetwood Mac. The fake Fleetwood Mac consisted of Elmer Gantry, vocals, guitar, Kirby Gregory, guitar, Paul Martinez, bass, John Wilkinson, keyboards, and Australian-born drummer Craig Collinge formerly of the librettos, procession, and Third World War. Fans were told that Bob Welch and John McVie had quit the group, and that Mick Fleetwood and Christine McVie would be joining the band at a later date, after getting some rest. The members of the fake Fleetwood Mac apparently had themselves been told that Mick Fleetwood would join them on later dates, and averred that Fleetwood had been involved in the early planning stages of the tour before dropping out. As the tour got underway, Fleetwood Mac's road manager, John Courage, worked one show before he realized that the lineup being used was a lie. Courage ended up hiding the real Fleetwood Max equipment, which helped shorten the tour by the fake band, which soon dissolved. But the lawsuit that followed regarding who actually owned the rights to the band name Fleetwood Mac put the real Fleetwood Mac out of commission for almost a year. While the band was named after Mick Fleetwood and John McVie, they had signed contracts that showed the band forfeited the rights to the name. In the aftermath of the dissolution of the fake Fleetwood Mac, nobody from that lineup was ever officially made a part of the real Fleetwood Mac, although some of them later acted as Danny Kerwin's studio band. Gantry and Gregory went on to become members of Stretch, whose 1975 UK hit single Why Did You Do It was written about the fake Fleetwood Mac touring debacle. Gantry later joined the Alan Parsons project. Fake Fleetwood Mac bassist Martinez, meanwhile, eventually went on to play with Pace Ashton Lord and Robert Plant's backing band. Return of the Real Fleetwood Mac, 1974 During the fake Fleetwood Mac months, Welch stayed in Los Angeles and connected with entertainment attorneys. He swiftly realized that the band was being neglected by Warner Brothers, and that if they wanted to change that, they would have to change their base of operation from England to Los Angeles, to which the rest of the band agreed immediately. Rock promoter Bill Graham wrote a letter to Warner Brothers to convince them that the real Fleetwood Mac were in fact Fleetwood, Welch, and the McVees, but while this did not end the legal battle, the band was able to record as Fleetwood Mac again. Instead of getting another manager, Fleetwood Mac decided to manage themselves. In September 1974, Fleetwood Mac signed a new recording contract with Warner Brothers, but remained on the reprise imprint. The quartet released their album Heroes Are Hard to Find in September 1974 and for the first time in its history, the band had only one guitarist. While on tour they added a second keyboardist, Doug Graves, 
who had been an engineer on Heroes Are Hard to Find although Graves was preparing to be a full member of the band following the US tour in late 1974. At the time he said. However, Graves did not ultimately join full-time. In 1980, Christine McVie explained the decision. Hunt, who had been in the band Head West with Bob Welch back in 1970 replaced Graves. Neither musician, however, proved to be a long-term addition to the lineup, and Welch left soon after the tour ended, on December 5, 1974 at Cal State University, having tired of the touring and legal struggles. Nevertheless, the tour enabled the Heroes album to reach a higher position on the American charts than any of the band's previous records. Mainstream Success, 1975-87 after Welch announced that he was leaving the band, Fleetwood began searching for a possible replacement. While Fleetwood was checking out Sound City Studios in L.A., the house engineer, Keith Olsen, played him a track which he had recorded in the studio, Frozen Love, from the album Buckingham Nicks, 1973. Fleetwood liked it, and was introduced to the guitarist from the band, Lindsay Buckingham, who coincidentally was at Sound City that day recording some demos. Fleetwood soon asked him to join. Buckingham agreed, on the condition that his music partner and girlfriend, Stevie Nicks, also become part of the band, Fleetwood agreed. Buckingham and Nicks joined the band on New Year's Eve 1974, within four weeks of the previous incarnation splitting. In 1975, the new lineup released the eponymous Fleetwood Mac. The album proved to be a breakthrough for the band and became a huge hit, reaching number one in the US and selling over 5 million copies. Among the hit singles from this album were Christine McVie's Over My Head and Say You Love Me, and Stevie Nicks' Rhiannon and Landslide, actually a hit 20 years later on the dance album. Behind the scenes the band was fraying apart in 1976, with the success of the band also came the end of John and Christine McVie's marriage as well as Buckingham and Nick's long-term romantic relationship. Even Fleetwood was in the midst of divorce proceedings from his wife, Jenny. The pressure put on Fleetwood Mac to release a successful follow-up album, combined with their newfound wealth, led to creative and personal tensions, fueled by high consumption of drugs and alcohol. The album Rumors, the band's first release on the main Warner label after Reprise was retired and all of its acts were reassigned to the parent label, was released in the spring of 1977, in which the band members laid bare the emotional turmoil they were experiencing at the time. Critically acclaimed, it was the recipient of the Grammy Award for Album of the Year for 1977. The album generated multiple top ten singles, including Buckingham's Go Your Own Way, Nick's US No. 1 Dreams, and Christine McVie's Don't Stop and You Make Loving Fun. Buckingham's Second-Hand News Nick's Gold Dust Woman and The Chain, the only song written by all five bandmates, also received significant radio airplay. By 2003, rumors had sold over 19 million copies in the US alone, certified as a diamond album by the RIAA, and a total of 40 million copies worldwide, making it the second biggest selling album of all time. Fleetwood Mac supported the album with a lucrative tour. On October 10, 1979, Fleetwood Mac was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for their contributions to the music industry at 6608 Hollywood Boulevard. Buckingham was able to convince Fleetwood to allow his work on their next album to be more experimental and to work on tracks at home, then bring them to the band in the studio. The result of this was the 20-track double album, Tusk, released in 1979. It spawned three hit singles, Lindsay Buckingham's Tusk, U.S. No. 8, which featured the USC Trojan marching band, Christine McVie's Think About Me, U.S. No. 20, and Stevie Nicks' six one-half-minute opus Sarah, U.S. No. 7. The last of those three was cut to four and one-half minutes for both the hit single and the first CD release of the album, but the unedited version has since been restored on the 1988 Greatest Hits compilation the 2004 reissue of Tusk and Fleetwood Mac's 2002 release of The Very Best of Fleetwood Mac. Original guitarist Green also took part in the sessions of Tusk, but his playing for the Christine McVie track Brown Eyes is not credited on the album. 
Tusk sold 4 million copies worldwide. Fleetwood blames the album's relative failure on the RKO radio chain playing the album in its entirety prior to release, thus allowing mass home taping. The band embarked on an 11-month tour to support and promote Tusk. They travelled across the world, including the USA, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, France, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. In Germany they shared the bill with reggae superstar Bob Marley. It was on this world tour that the band recorded music for the Fleetwood Mac Live album, which was released at the end of 1980. The next album, 1982's Mirage, following 1981 solo albums by Nix, Belladonna, Fleetwood, The Visitor, and Buckingham, Law and Order, was a return to the more conventional. Buckingham had been chided by critics fellow band members and music business managers for the lesser commercial success enjoyed by Tusk. Recorded at Chateau de Hiroville in France and produced by Richard Dashut, Mirage was an attempt to recapture the huge success of Rumours. Its hits included Christine McVie's Hold Me and Love in Store, each song being co-written by Robbie Patton and Jim Recker, respectively, Stevie Nicks' Gypsy, and Lindsay Buckingham's Oh Diane, which made the top ten in the UK. A minor hit was also scored by Buckingham's Eyes of the World and Can't Go Back. In contrast to the Tusk tour, the band only embarked on a short tour of 18 American cities, the Los Angeles show being recorded and released on video. They also headlined the first U.S. festival, on September 5, 1982, for which the band was paid $500,000, dollar today. Mirage was certified double platinum in the U.S. Following Mirage, the band went on hiatus, which allowed members to pursue solo careers. Stevie Nicks released two more solo albums, 1983's The Wild Heart and 1985's Rock a Little, Lindsay Buckingham issued Go Insane in 1984, the same year that Christine McVie made an eponymous album, yielding the top 10 hit Got a Hold on Me and the top 40 hit Love Will Show Us How. All three met with success and it was Nicks who became the most popular. However, also during this period, Mick Fleetwood had filed for bankruptcy, Nix was admitted to the Betty Ford Clinic for addiction problems, and John McVie had suffered an addiction-related seizure all attributed to the lifestyle of excess afforded to them by their worldwide success. It was rumored that Fleetwood Mac had finally broken up, however, Buckingham commented that he was unhappy to allow Mirage to remain as the band's last effort. The rumors line up of Fleetwood Mac recorded one more album for the time being, Tango in the Night, in 1987. Initially, as with various other Fleetwood Mac albums, the material started off as a Buckingham solo album before becoming a group project. The album went on to become their best-selling release since rumors, especially in the UK where it hit number one three times over the following year. The album sold three million copies in the USA and contained four hits, Christine McVie's Little Lies and Everywhere, the former being CEO written with McVie's new husband Eddie Quintilla, Sandy Stewart and Stevie Nicks' Seven Wonders, and Lindsay Buckingham's Big Love. Family Man Richard Dashut, and Isn't It Midnight, were also released as singles, with lesser success. Departure of Buckingham and Nicks, 1987-95 Although a 10-week tour was scheduled, Buckingham backed out at the last minute. He tried to explain to his bandmates that he felt his creativity was being stifled by his remaining in the band. A group meeting at Christine McVie's house on August 7, 1987 resulted in much rancor and recrimination, as well as an alleged, in Mick Fleetwood's autobiography, physical altercation between Buckingham and Nix. Buckingham left the band the following day. Following Buckingham's departure, Fleetwood Mac added two new guitarists to the band, Billy Burnett and Rick Vito. Burnett was mainly added for his singing and songwriter skills and Vito for his lead guitar abilities. Burnett is the son of Dorsey Burnett and nephew of Johnny Burnett, both of the rock and roll trio. He had already worked with Mick Fleetwood in Zoo, with Christine McVie as part of her solo band, did some session work with Stevie Nicks and even backed Lindsay Buckingham on Saturday Night Live. Furthermore. Fleetwood and Christine McVie played on his Try Me album in 1985. Vito, a Peter Green admirer, played with many artists from Bonnie Raitt to John Mayall, 
and even worked with John McVie on two May All albums. The 1987-88 Shake the Cage tour was the first outing for this lineup, and was successful enough to warrant the release of a concert video, simply titled Tango in the Night, filmed at San Francisco's Cow Palace Arena in December 1987. Capitalizing on the success of Tango in the Night, the band continued with a Greatest Hits album in 1988. It featured singles from the 1975-88 era, and included two new compositions, No Questions Asked written by Nix, and As Long As You Follow written by McVie and Quintilla, which was released as a single in 1988 but only made number 43 in the US and number 66 in the UK. It did, however, reach number one on the US adult contemporary charts. The Greatest Hits album, which peaked at number 3 in the UK and number 14 in the US, though has since sold over 8 million copies there, was dedicated to Buckingham by the band, with whom they had now reconciled. Following the Greatest Hits collection, Fleetwood Mac recorded Behind the Mask. With this album, the band veered away from the stylized sound that Buckingham had evolved during his tenure in the band, also evident in his solo works, and ended up with a more adult contemporary style from producer Greg Ladigny. However, the album yielded only one top 40 hit, McVie's Save Me. Behind the Mask only achieved gold album status in the US, peaking at number 18 on the Billboard album chart, though it entered the UK albums chart at number 1. It received mixed reviews, and was seen by some music critics as a low point for the band in the absence of Lindsay Buckingham who had actually made a guest appearance by playing on the title track. However, Rolling Stone magazine said that Vito and Burnett were the best thing to ever happen to Fleetwood Mac and the British Q magazine also praised the album in their review. The subsequent Behind the Mask tour saw the band play sold-out shows at London's Wembley Stadium, and on the final show in Los Angeles, the band were joined on stage by Buckingham. The two women of the band, McVie and Nix, had decided that the tour would be their last, McVie's father died during the tour, though both stated that they would still record with the band. However, in 1991, both Nix and Rick Vito announced they were leaving Fleetwood Mac altogether. In 1992, Fleetwood himself arranged a four-disc box set spanning highlights from the band's 25-year history, titled 25 Years the Chain, an edited two-disc set was also available. A notable inclusion in the box set was Silver Springs, a Stevie Nicks composition that was recorded during the Rumors sessions but was omitted from the album and used as the B-side of Go Your Own Way instead. Nicks had requested use of the track for her 1991 Best of compilation Time Space, but Fleetwood had refused her request as he had planned to include it in this collection as something of a rarity. The disagreement between Nicks and Fleetwood garnered press coverage and is believed to be the main catalyst for Nix leaving the band in 1991. The box set, however, also included a brand new Stevie Nicks Rick Vito composition, Paper Doll, which was released in the US as a single. As both members had left the band by this point, the track was presumably a leftover from the Behind the Mask sessions. There were also two new Christine McVie compositions, Heart of Stone and Love Shines, the latter of which was released as a single in the UK and certain other territories. Lindsay Buckingham also contributed a new song, Make Me a Mask, which bore all the markings of an insular Buckingham studio creation, devoid of input from other band members. Mick Fleetwood also released a deluxe hardcover companion book to coincide with the release of the box set, titled My 25 Years in Fleetwood Mac. The volume featured many rare photographs and notes, written by Fleetwood himself, detailing the band's 25-year history. Some months after this, the Buckingham Nix McVie McVie Fleetwood lineup reunited at the request of U.S. President Bill Clinton for his first inaugural ball in 1993. Clinton had made Fleetwood Mac's Don't Stop His Campaign theme song. His subsequent request to perform it at the inauguration ball was met with enthusiasm by the band, however this lineup had no intention to reunite again. Inspired by the new interest in the band, Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, and Christine McVie recorded another album as Fleetwood Mac, with Billy Burnett taking on lead guitar duties. However, just as they made the decision to continue, Billy Burnett announced in March 1993, 
that he was leaving the band to pursue a country album and an acting career. Becca Bramlett, who had worked a year earlier with Mick Fleetwood's Zoo, was recruited. Solo singer-songwriter guitarist and Traffic's Dave Mason, who had worked with Becca's parents Delaney and Bonnie 25 years earlier, was subsequently added. By March 1994, Billy Burnett, himself a good friend and CEO songwriter with Delaney Bramlett, returned with Fleetwood's Blessing. The band, minus Christine McVie, toured in 1994, opening for Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and in 1995 as part of a package with Rio Speedwagon and Pat Benatar. The tour saw the band perform classic Fleetwood Mac songs from the initial 1967-1974 era. In 1995, at a concert in Tokyo, the band was greeted by former member Jeremy Spencer, who performed a few songs with them. On October 10, 1995, Fleetwood Mac released the unsuccessful Time album. Although hitting the UK top 60 for one week the album had zero impact in the US. It failed even to graze the Billboard Top 200 Albums chart, a stunning reversal for a band that had been a mainstay on that chart for most of the previous two decades. Shortly after the album's release, Christine McVie informed the band that the album was her last. Bramlett and Burnett subsequently formed a country music duo, Becca and Billy. Breakup, 1995-97 Just weeks after disbanding Fleetwood Mac, Mick Fleetwood announced that he was working with Lindsay Buckingham again. John McVie was soon added to the sessions, and later Christine McVie. Stevie Nicks also enlisted Lindsay Buckingham to produce a song for a soundtrack. In May 1996, Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, Christine McVie and Stevie Nicks made an appearance at a private party in Louisville, Kentucky prior to the Kentucky Derby, with Steve Winwood filling in for Lindsay Buckingham. A week later, the Twister film soundtrack was released, which featured the Stevie Nicks Lindsay Buckingham duet, Twisted, with Mick Fleetwood on drums. This eventually led to a full rumors lineup reunion when the band officially reformed in March 1997. Reunion and Christine McVie's Departure, 1997 2007. The regrouped Mac performed a live concert recorded on a Warner Brothers Burbank, California soundstage on May 22. And from this performance came the 1997 live album The Dance, bringing Fleetwood Mac back to the top of the US album charts for the first time in 15 years. The album returned Fleetwood Mac to their superstar commercial status that they had not enjoyed since their Tango in the Night album. The album was certified a 5 million seller by the RIAA. A successful arena tour followed the MTV premiere of The Dance which kept the reunited Mac on the road throughout much of 1997, the 20th anniversary of their Rumors album. With the added ensemble of Neil Haywood on guitar, Brett Tuggle on keyboards, Lenny Castro on percussion, and Sharon Selene, she had toured with Fleetwood Mac in the late 1980s, and Mindy Stein on backing vocals, this would, however, be the final foray of the classic lineup with Christine McVie for 16 years. As of 2015, Brett Tuggle, Neil Haywood, and Sharon Selene still perform with Fleetwood Mac as touring musicians. In 1998, Fleetwood Mac were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Members inducted included the original band Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, Peter Green, Jeremy Spencer, and Danny Kerwin and Rumors era members Christine McVie, Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham, but not Bob Welch despite his key role in keeping the band alive during the early 1970s. The Rumors era version of the band performed both at the induction ceremony and at the Grammy Awards program that year. Peter Green attended the induction ceremony but did not perform with his former bandmates, opting instead to perform his composition Black Magic Woman with Santana, who were inducted the same night. Neither Jeremy Spencer nor Danny Kerwin attended. Fleetwood Mac were also the recipients of the Outstanding Contribution to Music Award at the Brit Awards, British Phonographic Industry Awards, the same year. In 1998, Christine McVie left the band. Her departure left Buckingham and Nicks to sing all the lead vocals for the band's 2003 album, Say You Will, although Christine did contribute some backing vocals and keyboards. 
The album debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 chart, number 6 in the UK, and yielded chart hits with Peacekeeper and the title track, and a successful World Arena tour which lasted through 2004. The tour grossed $27,711,129 and was ranked number 21 in the top 25 grossing tours of 2004. Around 2004-05, there were rumors of a reunion of the early lineup of Fleetwood Mac, involving Peter Green and Jeremy Spencer. Whilst these two guitarists and vocalists apparently remained unconvinced of the merits of such a project, in April 2006, during a question-and-answer session on the Penguin Fleetwood Mac fan website, bassist John McVie said of the reunion idea. In interviews given in November 2006 to support his solo album Under the Skin, Buckingham stated that plans for the band to reunite once more for a 2008 tour were still on the cards. Recording plans have been put on hold for the foreseeable future. In a September 2007 interview Stevie Nicks gave to the UK newspaper The Daily Telegraph, she noted that she was unwilling to carry on with the band unless Christine McVie returned. However, in a more recent interview, Mick Fleetwood said, Be very happy and hopeful that we will be working again. I can tell you everyone's going to be extremely excited about what's happening with Fleetwood Mac. Unleashed Tour and Extended Play, 2008-2014 On March 14, 2008, the Associated Press reported Cheryl Crow as saying that she would be working with Fleetwood Mac in 2009. Crow and Stevie Nicks collaborated a great deal in the past and she has stated that Nicks has been a great teacher and inspiration for her. In a subsequent interview with Buckingham, he said after discussions between the band and Crow, the potential collaboration with Crow lost its momentum. However, in a June 2008 interview, Nicks denied that Crow would be joining Fleetwood Mac as a replacement for Christine McVie. According to Nicks, the group will start working on material and recording probably in October, and finish an album. On October 7, 2008, Mick Fleetwood confirmed on the BBC's The One Show that the band were working in the studio and also announced plans for a world tour in 2009. In late 2008, Fleetwood Mac announced that the band would tour in 2009, beginning in March. As per the 2003-2004 tour, Christine McVie would not be featured in the lineup. The tour was branded as a greatest hits show entitled Unleashed, although they played album tracks such as Storms and I Know I'm Not Wrong. The first show was on March 1, 2009, and in February they announced a slew of new dates. During their show on June 20, 2009 in New Orleans, Louisiana, Stevie Nicks premiered part of a new song that she had written about Hurricane Katrina. The song was later released as New Orleans on Stevie Nicks' 2011 album In Your Dreams with Mick Fleetwood on drums. In October 2009, the band began a tour of Europe which carried on into early November, followed by a tour of Australia and New Zealand in December. Also in October, the very best of Fleetwood Mac was re-released in an extended two-disc format, this format having been released in the US in 2002 premiering at number 6 on the UK Albums Chart. On November 1, 2009, a new one-hour documentary, Fleetwood Mac, Don't Stop, was broadcast in the UK on BBC One, which featured recent interviews with all four current band members. During the documentary, Nix gave a candid summary of the current state of her relationship with Buckingham, stating maybe when we're 75 and Fleetwood Mac is a distant memory, we might be friends. On November 6, 2009, Fleetwood Mac played the last show of the European leg of their Unleashed tour at London's Wembley Arena. Christine McVie was present in the audience, so Stevie Nicks paid a tribute from the stage to a standing ovation from the audience, stating that she thought about her former bandmate every day, and went on to dedicate that night's performance of Landslide to McVie. On December 19, 2009, Fleetwood Mac played the second-to-last act of their Unleashed tour to a sell-out crowd at what was originally intended to be a one-off event at the TSB Bowl of Brooklands, New Plymouth, New Zealand. Tickets, after pre-sales, sold out within 12 minutes of public release, and another date, Sunday December 20, which also sold out, 
was added. The tour grossed $84,900,000 and was ranked number 13 in the highest grossing worldwide tours of 2009. On October 19, 2010, Fleetwood Mac played a private show at the Phoenician Hotel in Scottsdale, Arizona for TPG, Texas Pacific Group. On May 3, 2011, the Fox Network broadcast an episode of Glee entitled Rumors that featured six songs from the band's 1977 album. The show sparked renewed interest in the band and its most commercially successful album, and Rumors re-entered the Billboard 200 chart at number 11, the same week that Stevie Nicks' new solo album In Your Dreams debuted at number 6. Nicks was quoted by Billboard saying that her new album was My Own Little Rumors. The two recordings sold about 30,000 and 52,000 units, respectively. Music downloads accounted for 91% of the Rumors sales. The spike in sales for Rumors represented an uptick of 1,951%. It was the highest chart entry by a previously issued album since the Rolling Stones reissue of Exile on Main ST re-entered the chart at number 2 on June 5, 2010. In a July 2012 interview, Nix confirmed that the band would reunite for a tour in 2013. Original Fleetwood Mac bassist Bob Brunning died on October 18, 2011, at the age of 68. Former guitarist and singer Bob Weston was found dead on January 3, 2012, at the age of 64. Former singer and guitarist Bob Welch was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound on June 7, 2012, at the age of 66. A spokesman at the scene Don Aaron states he died from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest, Aaron said. A suicide note was found in the residence, Tennessean music team. The musician had been struggling with health issues and was dealing with depression. His wife was the one to discover the body. The band's 2013 tour, which covered 34 cities, started on April 4 in Columbus, O. Oh. The band performed two new songs, Sad Angel and Without You, which Buckingham described as some of the most Fleetwood Mac Y sounding songs since Mirage, with the latter song re-recorded from the Buckingham Knicks era. The band released their first new studio material in 10 years, Extended Play, on April 30, 2013. The EP debuted and peaked at number 48 in the US, and produced one single, Sad Angel. On 25 and September 27, 2013, the second and third nights of the band's London O2 shows, Christine McVie joined them on stage for Don't Stop. On October 27, the band announced that John McVie had been diagnosed with cancer, and that they were cancelling their New Zealand and Australian performances in order for him to undergo treatment. They stated that we are sorry to not be able to play these Australian and New Zealand dates. We hope our Australian and New Zealand fans as well as Fleetwood Mac fans everywhere will join us in wishing John and his family all the best. According to an article in The Guardian on November 22, 2013, Christine McVie stated that she would like to return to Fleetwood Mac if they wanted her, and also affirmed that John McVie's prognosis was really good. Return of Christine McVie, 2014 present. On January 11, 2014, Mick Fleetwood announced that Christine McVie would be rejoining Fleetwood Mac, and the news was confirmed on January 13 by the band's primary publicist, Liz Rosenberg. Rosenberg also stated that an official announcement regarding a new album and tour would be forthcoming. In October 2014, Stevie Nicks appeared on an FX TV show called American Horror Story, Coven right after their 2014 tour ended. Stevie Nicks appeared in the show while Fleetwood Mac's song Seven Wonders was playing in the background. On with the show, a 33-city North American tour opened in Minneapolis, Minnesota on September 30, 2014. A series of May-June 2015 arena dates in the United Kingdom went on sale on November 14, selling out in minutes. Additional dates for the tour have continued to be added, extending into November. In January 2015, Buckingham suggested that the new album and the new tour might be Fleetwood Mac's last act and that the band will cease to operate in 2015 or soon afterwards. He concluded, 
we're going to continue working on the new album, and the solo stuff will take a back seat for a year or two. A beautiful way to wrap up this last act. On the other hand, Mick Fleetwood stated that the new album may take a few years to complete and that they are waiting for contributions from Stevie Nicks, who has been ambivalent about committing to a new record. In August 2016, Fleetwood revealed that while the band has a, a huge amount of recorded music, virtually none of it features Stevie Nicks. Buckingham and Christine McVie however, have contributed multiple songs to the new project. Fleetwood told Ultimate Classic Rock, she, McVie, wrote up a storm. She and Lindsay could probably have a mighty strong duet album if they want. In truth, I hope it will come to more than that. There really are dozens of songs. And they're really good. So we'll see. Stevie Nicks explained her reluctance to record another album with Fleetwood Mac. Is it possible that Fleetwood Mac might do another record? I can never tell you yes or no, because I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's like, do you want to take a chance of going in and setting up in a room for like a year to record an album and having a bunch of arguing people? And then not wanting to go on tour because you just spent a year arguing. She also emphasized the point that people don't buy as many records as they used to. Fleetwood Mac also announced another world tour in 2017. Buckingham and Christine McVie officially announced a new album tentatively titled Buckingham McVie. While Mick Fleetwood and John McVie do appear on a few tracks, it will not be considered a part of the Fleetwood Mac canon. The album is scheduled for a May release. McVie also mentioned the possibility of playing smaller shows to promote the album. Remasters The 1967-69 era Blue Horizon albums, Fleetwood Mac, MR Wonderful, the Pious Bird of Good Omen and Fleetwood Mac in Chicago, and 1971 Outtakes album The Original Fleetwood Mac have been remastered and reissued on CD, as have the 1975-82 era Warner Brothers studio albums Fleetwood Mac, Rumors, Tusk and Mirage. In 2013, a deluxe edition of Rumors was released. The same year, Then Play On was remastered and reissued on CD. Remasters of Then Play On Kill House, Future Games and Bear Trees were released on vinyl, initially bundled with a seven single of Oh Well, Parts I and Two, then released separately in 2014. In 2015, a 5 CD 1 DVD 2 LP Deluxe Edition, a 3 CD Expanded Edition, plus a 1 CD remaster of Tusk was released. In 2016, multiple editions of Mirage Remastered were released. A 30th anniversary edition of Tango in the Night is scheduled for a March 31st release.